Hello, I'm Sarah Bauer and I'm Programme Manager at the National Centre for Writing with responsibility for our Emerging Literary Translators Mentoring Scheme um, and I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about that today um, in the hope of encouraging some of you to um, take an interest in applying for it when it opens for applications which will be on the 27th of July, the Monday immediately following this summer school. Um, the Scheme was founded 10 years ago this year by Danny Hahn uh, when he was uh, Director of Programmes at BCLT um, and it's now mentored nearly 90 mentees over those 10 years in just over 30 different languages um, ranging from the mainstream like French to the more obscure like Sarani Kurdish or um, Finnish Swedish for example we do try to encourage into English translations from languages which are underrepresented so um, we get quite excited about those kinds of languages um, the program runs for six months it matches a promising emerging translator with an experienced translator usually they are working in the same language um, but we do also have a strand of offering mentorships to translators working from any language, not necessarily the one that their mentor would work from, which gives them an opportunity to look more broadly at the issues facing literary translators when they bring um, a work from one language into another. And I will talk a little bit more about that. Um, later on. So um, it's a six month programme. It runs from the 1st of October every year to the 31st of March the following year. Um, and the structure is quite loose. It's very much up to the mentoring pair to decide how they'll work and what text they'll work on. Um, but usually they will have some sort of face to face meeting which may very well be electronically, particularly uh, in current times, but is often the case if, for example, they don't live in the same country or something like that. But they will have about four face-to-face -face sessions. Um, in between times, the mentee will work on texts that they've agreed with the mentor. In the face-to-face -face sessions, they'll talk not just about particular issues that have arisen with translating those texts, but more broadly, about the life of a literary translator. Um, we then, um, in January, halfway through the scheme, there's a residential weekend which takes place at Dragon Hall, at NCW's Dragon Hall campus in Norwich. Um, and at that, everybody gets together. The mentors and the mentees have an opportunity to get together, so it's a bit of a social and networking event. But also, um, there's a focus on the business of literary translation. So there's talks on contracts. Um, we discuss the upcoming London Book Fair, to which we give the mentees free access, talk about how best to use that, how to make appointments, and, and, and how best to use that time. Um, we have talks about the other ways that literary translators earn a living because translation may be one strand of a life in which you teach, in which you mentor yourself, for example, um, in which you might do other work to promote the language and culture that you specialise in. So it's not just translation, it's a whole range of other activities relating to and built around translation. So there's all that will be discussed at the at the at the men at the um residential weekend. Um and then um we also publish an anthology of work. So part of the text on which you will work you will extract some of that to go into an anthology and then we give the mentees copies of that anthology that they can use as calling cards with publishers and people commissioning translations to give a demonstration of the um, of the work 
that they have done and are capable of. Um, and then, as I said, the finale is free access to the London Book Fair, um, uh, which mentees get a chance to have face-to-face -face meetings with publishers to attend translation panels in the um, in the International Translation Centre which um, NCW runs um, a certain amount of the programming in. Um, it's also an opportunity for them to participate in panels as well as to attend them so sometimes mentees will be asked to participate in in, in the panels as well um, which is you know another factor in earning a living as a translator um, so uh, we are still at this time of recording in the process of confirming all the languages that we will be offering for 2020-21 um, but to date the languages which are confirmed are Polish, Danish, Norwegian, um, and we will also be, oh, Swiss French is another one, um, and we'll also be offering um, mentorship in a, a non-language specific mentorship, as I mentioned before, as part of our Visible Communities project, which is a project designed to um, promote and encourage emerging translators from the BAME community in the UK into literary translation. So that will be open to um, applications from uh, members of the BAME community who are resident in the UK. Um, and it will be part, as I say, of the Visible Communities Project, which National Centre for Writing um, is currently running. Um, and I think that concludes what I have to say about the programme. Um, I hope very much that it has inspired some of you to want to take that further and to apply for the scheme. Um, as I say, I'm based at National Centre for Writing. You will already by now be familiar with me, some of, some of you, but, uh, through other involvement in, in summer school. Um, but uh, you'll have my contact details, you know where to find me if you want to inquire further. Um, do visit the NCW website on Monday when we will put up all the application details on our Emerging Literary Translators uh, specialist page. So thank you for listening. Hi, my name is Joe Vanderbilt and I'm the ad current admin of the Emerging Translators Network, which is a forum and support network for early career literary translators and we currently have about a thousand members. Most of those members work into English and are based in the UK, um, but there are plenty of people living further afield and working into other target languages. As the name suggests, the majority of members are emerging literary translators, so uh, the list is mainly designed for people who are new to the profession and who haven't had their work published yet, or who perhaps only have a few publications to their name and are looking to, to get into, the, into, the, into the literary translation as a career. Um, and the network offers a forum for people to share advice and just general encouragement. Um, topics that often come up include uh, pitching to publishers, contracts and rights, uh, tracking down obscure references, or even kind of solving tricky linguistic problems like puns and wordplay, and those are some of the most fun threads, actually. Um, and uh, yeah, so the ETN, it was founded in 2011 by Rosalind Harvey, Anna Homewood, and Jamie Lee Searle, and has been run for most of its existence by uh, Roland Glasser, who was the previous admin and from whom I took over in mid-2000. 19. Um, and over the nine years of its existence, quite a few of the, the original members have now emerged as translators and are well recognized professionals in their own right, and they continue to contribute. Um, so it's a really invaluable resource in terms of asking questions for more experienced professionals as well as sharing advice and, and uh, enthusiasm with up and coming members. Um, and there's also plenty of scope for people to share job opportunities or general news about the profession. So that can be anything from competitions to residencies, work opportunities, um, yeah, shout outs for help um, and advice and um, including uh, non-literary translation jobs. So it's just a really good way of keeping in touch with other translators and keeping in the know about new developments in the industry. New members are very welcome to join the ETN. All you have to do is send an email to etncontact at gmail.com 
with a bit of an explanation about your interest in literary translation, any studies you may have done or work experience you might have, um, or just a general interest in books and literature and foreign languages. And uh, yeah, I'll be happy to add you to the network. Hello, my name is Will Forrester and I'm Translation and International Manager at English Pen, uh, the founding centre of a worldwide association of writers. For those who don't know about Penn's work, we're a literature and human rights organisation that's been working for the last 99 years um, in pursuit of the mission of freedom to read and freedom to write for all. We do this through several programmes. We support writers at risk and campaign on issues of free expression in the UK and internationally. We showcase diverse voices and writing through events and prizes. And we support the movement of literature and ideas across borders through our work in translation, which is what I'll be discussing today. Our translation program has three strands. We have an online magazine called Pen Transmissions, which publishes essays and interviews with international and translated voices. We organize events like International Translation Day, which is now the largest coming together for the practicing translation community in the UK. And we also have a grants program called Pen Translates, which is the main thing I'll be discussing. Pen Translates was launched in 2012 with support from Arts Council England to encourage UK publishers to acquire more books from other languages. The award helps UK publishers to meet the cost of translating new works into English, whilst also ensuring that translators are acknowledged and paid properly for their work. The award funds up to 75% of translation costs for selected projects. And when a publisher's annual turnover is less than £500,000, we will consider supporting up to 100% of those costs. There are two rounds a year. There's a submission period in April and May with awards decided and announced in November and a second in October and November with awards then announced the following May. Um, there is a process whereby a publisher will submit an original manuscript, a sample translation and supporting documents which will then be assessed independently by translators and language specialists. And the final grants are then decided by a selection panel, uh, an independent group of industry professionals, including writers, translators, booksellers, critics, and publishers not in the round, which will assess the portfolio of applications and determine the final grants. There are three criteria on which projects are assessed. Firstly, and with the strongest weighting, their literary quality. Secondly, their strength of their marketing plan. And finally, their contribution to UK bibliodiversity, which is a bit of a complex phrase, and you can find more on that on our website. Um, there are a few things to point out about Pen Translates that I think would be interesting in this context. Whereas, as you'll know as translators, what gets supported um, in the translation landscape is heavily determined by which cultural ministries and state funds support translation. Pen Translates is open to titles from any language, any country, of any genre and in any form. And it tries therefore to level the playing field. Because we have a broad conception of bibliodiversity, it's also not just about a book's theme and language or its country of origin that, that has a bearing on those final grants, but also who's working on it. And in this way, we look to support the inclusion of a diverse range of writers and translators in the sector. Because Pen Translates asks for the TA observed rate of pay, it also advocates for fair remuneration of translators. And over the past eight years, we've seen the positive effects of this. And finally, something particular about Pen Translates is that it accepts submissions for works at a range of stages in the production process, as late as when a translation is fully completed, but also, crucially, as early as when rights haven't yet been acquired. This has served to mean that the grant can be a useful advocacy tool when translators are pitching to editors 
and, and we'd always encourage those pitching to point publishers in the direction of Pen Translates. Um, Pen Translates in the last eight years has awarded now a million pounds of funding, so it's a really significant grant in the landscape. Um, if you'd like to know any more about it, or indeed any of Penn's work, um, please do feel free to be in touch. And my email is will at englishpen.org. Um, thank you. And I hope that depending on when this video is being shared, that you have enjoyed, are enjoying, or will enjoy the BCLT Summer School. Thank you. Hello, I'm Catherine Fuller. I'm the Secretary of the Translators Association in the UK. So what's the PA and why be a part of it? The Translators Association is part of the UK Society of Authors, which is the professional organi organisation for all kinds of writers, from, from writers to translators, to illustrators and journalists. We have over 11,000 members, so we are the voice of the writing profession in the UK. The TA is a special interest group of the SOA, so join us as a translator and you also become a member of the Society of Authors as well. It's the whole package. The Society of Authors offers a whole range of umbrella benefits for you. And we campaign and lobby on the, on the issues and events which affect authors across the UK. And we administer a range of grants and prizes, including a cohort of literary translation prizes, ranging from everything from French to Arabic, the Translators Association Prize for an emerging translator and their first published novel. We also offer a wide range of exclusive offers on book services and membership. But our key and unique selling point is that all members are entitled to free and unlimited contract advice. So if you have a contract for a book, then we will vet that contract for you on a clause by clause basis. And you're entitled to unlimited advice from our experienced team of specialist contract advisors. This is at the heart of our work. We see hundreds of contracts every year, so we have unrivaled first-hand knowledge of the industry. It's not just about giving you advice though, it's about community. Of our 11,000 members, 700 of them are translators, and we're one of the largest SOA groups. The translation community is a vibrant and active community. You have access to a specialist TA forum discussion website only for TA members are where you're able to informally and safely share all of your translation concerns. We also have a regular TA newsletter and we have a specialist a Twitter feed. The SOA's a quarterly publication, the author, also includes regular translation content. Under normal times, we would also offer you a wide program of events where you actually get to meet a real life people and, and see all of them, including their feet, not just their faces, in Zoom boxes. I hope that sometime soon I will be able to get back to that again. However, of course, everything is online at the moment. Uh, we've recently run a Translators in Conversation event um, in which three of our leading translation professionals discuss the impact of of lockdown on their work, on themselves and their creativity. And you can still access that on the SOA website. And we'll also be planning future online events during the autumn. We also run campaigns too. One of our main campaigns is around a, a translation credit. And I'm sure that a lot of you are already familiar with the name, the translator hashtag. So we liaise are regularly with, with publishers and organisations such as Amazon, everyone involved, including reviewers, to make sure that translators get the credit which they deserve. We're also currently starting to launch a campaign around uh, uh, literary prizes to ensure that there is greater access and also reward for translations. So, how do you get involved? 
well, the most important thing to remember is you don't have to have published a translation in order to join the SOA. If you have published a translation or you've been offered a full contract, then you can join us as a full member. But you can also join us as an, as an emerging translator. And all that we ask is that you demonstrate a serious interest in becoming a literary translator. And you're watching this because you've agreed to sign up for the BCLP Summer School. So that ticks the box. So come and join us. I think one of the most important things that, uh, that we do is also around empowerment. Uh, we give you advice, uh, uh, and we make you feel part of a community, but ultimately it's about you and we give you the tools that you need so, so you feel confident as a professional translator in negotiating your way through the profession. And in many ways, I think that's the most important thing uh, which we do. If you'd like to find out more, then there's lots of details on the SOA website www.societyofauthors.org. It's a generous, friendly and forward-thinking community. So come and join us.